Okay, here we go. So this is going to be just like the other word problems. Really, they are. We're just going to solve them in the end, not by graphing, but by doing this little calculator thing, simplex thing. All right, bicycle, I'd make it bigger, but it would go off the screen. So it's best, hope you can read that print. A bicycle manufacturer builds one, three, and ten speed models. The bicycles need both aluminum and steel. The company has available 35,265 units of steel and 47,540 units of aluminum. The one, three, and ten speed models need respectively 612 and 15 units of steel and 618 and 16, 8, and 20 units of aluminum. How many of each type of bicycle should be made in order to maximize profit if the company makes $4 per one speed bike? $8 per 3-speed and $20 per 10-speed, what is the maximum possible profit? So a very practical kind of question as companies make decisions on what to do with their resources to make as much profit as possible. This is called, you know, this is linear programming. This is basically a linear programming problem, which we're going to solve not by graphing but by using the simplex method. Um, okay. By the way, you might wonder, like, why, why the simplex? Why didn't we just solve them all by graphing? Even though you probably prefer this to the graphing. The main reason you actually can't always graph them is because the graphing ones only had two variables, x and y. What would we do with this one? There's three variables. We'd have to graph in three dimensions, which that's possible, I guess, but pretty tough. And then what about when they go to four variables, five variables, six variables? Real life, they solve real life businesses have 20 variables. You'd have to graph in 20 dimensions. I'm not even sure what that's like. That's why the simplex algorithm, simplex method came about because the graphing thing is only really doable for two variables, x and y. When you get beyond two variables, like we have three different types of bikes here, how are you going to do that? You have to graph in 3D. So, all right, bless you. All right, so let's, let's go to it. So first off, we've got to write out of our equations. Remember, whatever it is, I don't know how you're doing it at getting used to going from words to equations. We've had a lot of practice on it. Now, that's a lot of this next exam. So let me help you with that. Um, one speed, three speed, ten speed. Look at your variables. Whatever your variables are, those are what go at the top. Let's just call those X, Y, and Z. Put those right at the top. X, Y, or I, I guess we're doing X1, X2, yeah. X1, X2, X3. So that's, that's what we'll call it. Those are the variables. But my, my main point is I put those across the top, not down the side. Everybody see that? Remember how I was showing you to set these up? Put your variables across. Don't put them down the side put them across the top. It'll make it natural for writing your equations. Put them, put your variables, and you can tell what it is because that's what they're asking for, right? So put whatever they're asking for across the top. You getting the hang of that? That's how you always begin these word problems. Look at whatever they want from you and put that across the top. Now, what is that? What am I going to put down the side? Whatever other qualities they speak of. What other qualities or quantities do they speak of? Aluminum and steel. Aluminum, steel. Those will go on the side. Do you see how you figure that? It's always this way. Variables across the top, other things down the side. Variables across the top, what you're looking for in the end. Those are variables across the top, other things down the side. Okay, here we go. The company has 35,265 steel. So that goes over here. 35, 265, that's the steel. That's the total steel number, isn't it? And how much aluminum? 47,000. 540, that's the total aluminum number. That's what they have available. That's their total, right? Okay, now it says 1, 3, and 10 speed have 6, 12, and 15 for steel. So that's 6. 12 and 15 for the steel line, for the steel row. See how I put those in? 6, 12, and 15 for steel. 16, 18, and no, 16, 8, and 20 for the aluminum. There we go. The rest is going to be the same. I'll, I'll do it with you, but that's, that's, I'm done with the words. Well, almost. Well, one more thing. I forgot. What are we trying to maximize? Um, profit. And what is profit? $4 per one speed, so 4x1, $8 per three speed, 8x2, $20 per 10 speed, 20x3.
Now we're ready. Now we just turn that into a simplex tableau and hit the simplex button. We'll do it together. But does everybody see how I came up with that? He says, yeah. We put it on the bottom for the equation 4, 8, 20 equals 0. Negative. Remember, you move them over so they're negative 4, negative 8, negative 20. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do it. Let's turn this into now. So when I come over here, here we go. I'm going to start making my, my tableau. So it's 16, 6, 8, 12, 20, 15. I just grabbed these. Right? 16, 6, 8, 12, 20, 15. But then remember, the right side you put way over to the right. 47,000. 540, 35,265. Good so far. And then how do we do the bottom row? Yeah, the, the 4, the, that's the profit one. The 4, the 8, and the 20 need to jump to the other side. Negative 4, negative 8, negative 20, and 0. That leaves nothing on the right side. Right? You good with that? That's just the way I did it on the last ones, huh? Everybody see that? So for the profit one, you take the 4, the 8, and the 20, and you jump them to the left side. And that leaves nothing. There's zero now here, because everything left the right side. There's zero on the right side, isn't there? And then what do you put in the gap? One's down the diagonal. You put a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. Fill in zeros everywhere else. Put that into your calculator as matrix A and hit the hit the button, the program, the simplex program. Three by seven again, huh? I got an answer. Mine came out fractions this time. I don't know why that other one didn't. It's weird. But then some of them didn't come out for actions. Getting that? And I'll put my lines here. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Well, remember we had x1, x2, x3, z at the back. So what's x1? Zero. That's the number of one speed bikes they should make. What's x2? Zero, because it's not all zeros. What's x3? Take the one, go over here, 23, 51. So that's what they should do. They should make 2,351 10-speed bikes and forget about the other two. And they will make maximum profit of $47,020. So the, the math is telling them they should ditch the one-speed and the three-speed bikes and just make 10-speed if they want to maximize their profit. Did that come out okay for you all? I'm going to go back to the other screen.
over here. Everything okay there? You see what, what we had? So we got that set up. Questions? All right. You're good. I'm going to move ahead. A couple of word problems. Are word problems your friends now? <laughs> All right. Let's try this one. Let's see what you can do. Jayanta is raising money for the homeless, discovers each church group requires two hours of letter writing, one hour of follow-up calls. Well, each labor union needs two hours of letter writing, three hours of follow-up. She can raise $100 from each church group and $175 from each union. She has a maximum of 100, uh, 16 hours of letter writing and 14 hours of follow-up available. Determine the most profitable mixture of groups to make the, raise the most money possible. Okay. See what you can do. So remember, so look, look at what they want from you in the end and put that across the top, right? Look at what they want from you. What do they want from you? Church groups, labor unions. That goes across the top. Other stuff down the side, right? Give you a minute here. So, so this will be X1. Let me change the color here. So this is X1, this is X2. So X1 and X2 across the top, church, church groups and labor unions. If it helps, you can put a, if, if you want to you can change the variable, whatever. You can call them church groups and labor unions. So C and L or X1, X2, whatever. Maybe C and L would be easier for you. Uh, you can remember what they are that way better. So church groups and labor unions, right? Those are my variables. That's what they want from me. Those always go across the top. Now, what other things are we talking about in this problem? Hours of letter writing, hours of follow-up, huh? So letters, follow-up. Those go down the side. You getting the hang of this? So you always put the main variables that you want, how many church groups, how many labor unions, across the top. And you know that's main because that's what they're asking for. In the end, that's the answer they want. And down the side, the other things. In this case, letters and follow-up. You can get it from there. So each church group is two hours of letter writing, one hour follow-up. Two, one, huh? That's down the church row there. And then the labor union is two letter, three follow-up. Two letter, three follow-up. Down the L row, or L column. Is that good? And then, and now she can raise $100 from each church group, church group and 175 from labor. Now that's, that's her profit, isn't it? That's what she wants. That's her money, well, I don't know, profit, or the money she's she's raising. She wants to raise, she wants to maximize what she can raise. That's $100 times each church group plus 175 times each labor union. Huh. Okay. How are we doing? And then she has, what else, what else, what other numbers have we not used? 16 and That's 16 and that 14, huh? That's a maximum. Those are, those are like the most, right? 16 and 14. So that's, 16 is letter writing. So that goes out here for letter writing. And 14 for follow-up goes out there for follow-up. See how I came up with that? He's getting a little easier, his word problems. Put the variables across the top, the other stuff down the side. Can you make the simplex tableau?
So can I just make it easy? Take the 100, jump it over, take the 175, jump over. So it's going to be minus 100. See how it's, in the, it's just going to be negative on those numbers that are in the, the maximized row? And in order to save time, how about I do this? Just move the 16 and the 14 way over to the right side. And this one's always zero. The lower right's always zero. That's okay. And then I just put ones down the diagonal. Zeros everywhere else. I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. There it is. There's your, there's your matrix. Go do the simplex program and get your answers. Is that okay? I want to move on. Spend our time setting up word problems to be more helpful to you, I think. Is that okay? Everybody okay with how I set that up then? So just whatever numbers are in your maximized memory, those jump over so they become negative, don't they? And then you move the, these way up to the right. Always a zero in the lower right corner. And then fill in ones in the diagonal. Is it? Decimals. Decimals. And, yeah. If you have any trouble with that, come see me. I, I think that's the easier part. Let's All right, let's try this one. Number three, lots of words here. I wish I could make them a little bigger for you. Those are going to go off the screen if I did. So company sells sets of kitchen knives. Can you guys see that okay? Kitchen knives. A basic set consists of four utility knives, one chef knife. A regular set consists of two utility, one chef, and one slicer. A deluxe set is four utility, one chef, one slicer. Profit is forty dollars in basics, fifty on a regular, seventy on deluxe. The factory has on hand twenty seven hundred utility knives, nine hundred chef, three hundred slicers. If all sets will be sold, how many of each type should be made should be made up in order to maximize profit? What is the maximum profit? The weather's changing. We have an old system here on campus. We have an old campus. And this building is one of the oldest. And so it takes, I don't know, it takes like a couple days for the system to change. It's a water cooler system. So when the weather changes, they need a couple days to reprogram or get that thing to change. So that's what you're experiencing. The ancient science math building. They're building a new one. You probably heard. Maybe you heard. They are planning to build a new one. Are they planning on taking this out of the apartment center? Um, do you know where the administration offices are? Um, across, I, don't, I get all turned around. I guess I do know. So, um, what's that? The, over, over, kind of by. Um, oh, I'm gonna say that wrong. Wendy. Um, is that where it is? The, the administration. I get turned around easily. Sorry, I, it's over. It's heading towards health science. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heading over there, the, the administration buildings. They just bought something downtown. Yeah. Big. Oh. High rise thing or 20 story oh, building. Yeah, they were talking downtown, but um, they, were making, they were kind of making a joke about it because um, on, when you walk into your regular library, it's, that, it's a picture of that building now. But they said there was really no point to that because they just sold it. Well, not sold it, but they bought a new one. Yeah, oh, so they have a picture of this administration yeah. now? <laughs> that is funny because, yeah, now yeah, they just bought a new one. So they're going to move basically from there over there, and I think they're going to put the science building in right there where the administration is now, I think. It's about the extent of my knowledge right there. That would be my guess. There, there's a shift happening. All right. So I don't, think, I don't think math is going with them. I think it's going to mainly be science. I'm just hoping we get out of the basement. That's my big hope. Maybe we can move up a level. All right. I'm just half joking. So, um, all right. So let's set these. You guys doing okay? So what are the variables on this one? Look, they're starting with this. How many basic sets? That's the first thing they're going to ask. So there's three parts remaining down here. So they're going to ask other questions too. But their first question is how many, um, how many basic tests? So they're going, to, they're going to ask how many basic, what's going to come next? How many regular and how many deluxe? Yeah. Do, do you see that's going to be their questions? 
So those are my variables. Those are what go across the top. So always look at what they're asking for and put that across the top because that's your variables. How many basic, how many regular, how many deluxe. So then the other stuff goes down the side. So what goes down the side? Um, utility, utility knives, chef's knives, and slicers. Right? See that? So I'm coming, getting the hang of this. See how I'm coming up with this? So there's the variables across the top, the other stuff down the side. Can you fill in the rest? So basic set is four utility, one chef. Four utility, one chef must be no slicer. They don't say anything. They just say four utility, one chef. So that must be no slicers in the basic set. Is that making sense how I'm doing that? See, that's, down, that's all in the basic column, right? Because that was a basic set, four utility, one chef. See how that's working? And then do the regular. And do the deluxe. And don't forget to put the profit thing on the top. Good? That's making sense? So regular is two utility, one chef, one slicer. Two utility, one chef, one slicer. Deluxe is four utility, one chef, one slicer. Four utility, one chef, one slicer. Good. And then up here we do the profit, which is what we're trying to maximize. It is $40 on a basic, 40 X1, um, 50 on a regular, 50 X2, 70 on a deluxe, 70x3. Like that? Uh, good. Or you could call them, if you don't want to do x1, x2, x3, you, it doesn't matter what you call them because we're just going to put numbers into our calculator. So it really doesn't matter. But you could call it basic, regular, and deluxe if you want. Whatever. You know, it's all going to just be numbers in our calculator as long as you have them in the right spots. Right? Everybody see how I'm, everybody see how I come with that? And then, then the other numbers would be um, 2,700 utility. That's over here. Well, in fact, let me, let me scoot that way off to the right. That'd be 2,700 utility, 900 chef, 300 slicer. Is that good? See how I came up with that? Variables across the top, other stuff down the side. And then just follow the words, follow the yellow brick road, so to speak. Getting more comfortable with these word problems? You can do these things, huh? A little practice. They're kind of the same every time. There's a couple wrinkles every now and then. Those ones are hard when they, when they throw a curveball at us. But 80% of them are kind of the same thing every time. Now, how would you put this in your calculator? Well, then you'd have to do this row. What do you, what do, you do for the profit one? These guys just jump to the left, don't they? Leaving nothing on the right side, leaving zero on the right side, huh? And so that, that's why they become negative. So it's negative 40, negative 50, negative 70 for that one. And then in the missing spot, you know what to do. 
ones down the diagonal. Oh, we have more this time, don't we? So there we go. Got to do a little bit more. So I had to do four ones this time because I had four, four levels. Everybody see that? I had to do ones. Oh, you have to go all the way to the bottom. And so I had, I had four levels this time. So you've got to put ones down the diagonal all the way to the bottom. And so that took four ones. And so there we go. Put that thing in your calculator. Hit the simplex button. A lot better than graphing. And you'll get an answer. Pretty complex question, huh? That we can solve. That's impressive stuff. These are tough business questions. We can now solve. Questions I can answer? So what else we got here? So number five. So fashion store has 12,000 available each month for advertising. Newspaper ads cost 600 apiece. And no more than 40 can be run per month. Radio ads cost $300 each and no more than 50 can be run per month. TV ads cost $1,800 apiece with a maximum of six available each month. Approximately 3,000 women will see each newspaper ad. 1,800 will hear each radio ad and 16,000 will see each TV ad. How much of each type of advertising should be used if the store wants to maximize exposure? That's different. We're not maximizing money here. We're maximizing exposure, the goal of advertising, right? Maximum exposure. So that's different. That's different. Okay. So what are my variables? Let me let you start there. It's the same way as usual. Look what they're asking for. That's the first variable, huh? And the other things like that will be the other variable. Put those across the top. Okay, so how many newspaper ads? So, so how many news? So that'll be my first variable. So if newspaper ads is my first variable, what do you think my second variable is? Radio, huh? Radio ads, and, and my next one is TV ads, huh? That's what they're going to ask me. How many, how many ads should we put in the newspaper? How many ads should we put on the radio? How many on the television? And, and what's going to be our total exposure? Where they're trying to maximize exposure. So good. So variables across the top. What are the variables? What they're asking for. So there's your variables. Okay, put the other stuff down the side. What's the other stuff? Cost and? Because we're trying to maximize the runs, right? Maximize exposure. So, so the other variables are cost, right? How much one of these things costs. And number. Like there's, there's, a, there's a limit to the number. I think. Let's see if I got that right. I'm a little confused too. Let's take a look. So, uh, um, okay. So let's go. Newspaper ads cost 600 Okay, so newspaper ads, newspaper cost 600 and no more than 40 can be run per month. So no more than 40 can be run per month. So yeah, that's number. Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I just keep saying, yeah. So uh, what it means is a 1 is here and a 40 is there. How do I explain that? It's because what the equation is actually saying is it's saying, like, it's saying the number of newspaper ads must be less than or equal to 40. That's what they're at, which means 1 in less than or equal to 40. That's confusing. Do you see that? That's, that's a curveball for sure. That's not normal. That's, they're throwing a curveball at us. That's what they're saying. Number of newspaper ads, just in, so just 1 times in, must be less than or equal to 40, right? Maximum 40. That's all that they're allowed to put in the paper. And, um, right. And then radio ads. Let's do the radio now. The radio ads, each radio ad costs 300, 300 for radio ads. And one times the number of radio ads is less than or equal to 50. So that's, it's got to have its own separate thing there. That's a separate equation. It's totally separate. Yeah, this is different. This one's different. That's what it means, right? The number of radio is less than or equal to 50. TV ads are 1,800 each. And one, like the number, you don't, if the one is throwing you off, just get rid of the ones at first. 
It just says number of TV ads, six, less than or equal to six, right? It's, it, that's what it says. Is not six available? Number of TV ads must be less than or equal to six. See how I'm coming up with that? Just kind of using common sense about what it means. It's a curveball. This one is not as straight ahead. You've got to be a little more creative or just kind of think it out more reasonably. So, um, okay. And then um, now, what do we try? Let's do the maximums thing up, up here. What are we trying to maximize? Exposure. How many people see or hear about the ad or read about the ad? Well, how do you do that? 18, or what is it? 3,000 will see each newspaper. 3,000 times N plus 1,800 for each radio. 1,800 radio plus 16,000, 16, yeah, 16,000 each TV ad. That's maximum exposure. That's what you're trying to maximize is that exposure. Have I got all the numbers? Oh, and the 12,000 is the, is the total amount, the money they have, the cost must be less than or equal to 12,000. They have 12,000 to spend on all this different advertising. Yeah, there it is. So this is a one here, a one here, a one here. That means these are zeros. But we still have to add the other zeros and ones. These zeros and ones, these are all just number facts. So let me, let me finish this one and we'll be finished. We'll be out of time. So let me finish this one and we'll be done. So, you, so that's just the original setup. You still have to push these to the right side. So let me push these over to the right side. What were those numbers? It was, um, and I'll get rid of these too. It was a 12,000. And this was, um, what was news? 40. And radio was 6, I can't read it, 50. And TV was 6, like that. All right, so in the middle section in there, you know what we got to do. Oh, and I didn't do the bottom yet. Let's, let's jump these guys over. Move these guys over. So they will become negative 3,000, negative 1,800, negative 16,000. And now, finally, ones down the diagonal. It took me four levels. Oh, and they're supposed to be a zero. I'm getting this all messed up. Wait, wait. I am getting totally messed up. Let's try this again. This is supposed to be 6. We're going to keep these lined up. This is supposed to be 6. This is 0. So there's five layers. There we go. Everybody see that? Wait a minute. I'm, I'm messed up here. Oh, boy, I'm having a little trouble here. Hold on. Let's try this again. I'm just getting my things off the line here. 40, 50, 6, 0. There we go. There we go. With zeros everywhere else, right? 0, 0. So this is a 1 here and a 1 here. Five layers on this one. There we go. Look at that. So there were five levels, weren't there? I just kept getting my lineup off. That's a big matrix. So that's for advertising companies and how they would maximize their exposure. All right, that was a tough one. Spend some time thinking back over that one. I just kept getting my lineup. Sorry about the confusion there. Yeah, so this is...